Hi, my name is Monica Faraday, and I have over 30 years experience as a speech language pathologist and teacher of students that are deaf or hard of hearing. In 2002, I became an itinerant teacher for the first time. My training and previous jobs involved developing auditory and language skills, so I felt competent working on those. But I was receiving IEPs that had self-advocacy goals on them, and I had no idea how to develop these other than role-playing scenarios. Not only was I asking myself how to work on these skills, I was also asking myself why should we as teachers of deaf, hard-of-hearing students work on self-advocacy skills? Once a student is meeting academic benchmarks, they should be exited from special education. They no longer need our services, right? The answer is no. Self-advocacy abilities are functional skills mandated by IDEA 2004 and should be included as IEP goals. As professionals, we understand that if a student with a hearing loss does not speak up for themselves and their needs in the classroom, then those students will not have equal access to the educational environment guaranteed under IDEA 2004. Now that I had explored the why, I had to figure out how to get my students actively involved in developing their self-advocacy skills. After a few years, I put together the various scenarios with the idea that kids like to do anything that is in a game format. I sketched out my ideas on paper, tested it, and Rule the School Self-Advocacy Board Game was born. One, two, three, four, five, six, challenge. One morning you arrive in your class and see an unfamiliar substitute. What would you do in that situation? I would tell them about the FM. You would and tell them? To, and tell them how to use it and how it works and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so, for example, if I was that unfamiliar substitute, what would you say to me? You'd come up and you'd say, um, I'm hearing impaired, and like this is FM, which I used to help me hear, and you turn it on up here and down here, and um, I bring like specials and math with me. Okay. And like you wear it like this. All right. I'm not sure the matter. So, do I have to wear it all the time? No. Yes. No, not really, because we don't like, do, like, sometimes, not, not usually, like, we're all doing, like, this one thing. Like, we're, like, doing vocab jigsaw, where your teacher and you teach him enough. Wait, 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 we're doing what? Vocab jig jigsaw and, like... Vocab jigsaw. Three, one, two, three, challenge. You go on a field trip to the art museum. A guide is telling about the painting. Where should you be? In front of the, uh, the teller who's telling about the painting. Okay, well we'll call that a guide or a docent mm -hmm. at a museum, not a teller. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're gonna be standing in front of her. Why? Why is that important? To see what she's saying. To be able to see, see her, her face and see what she's saying. To see and hear what she's saying. Right, to watch her face and to hear what she's saying so you can get all the information. What if you have a guide who's talking to your little group, what else should she be doing? Or what should she be doing? mic. Very good. We we're just talking about that. I'm sorry, would you please repeat that? It's where your eardrum is. Oh, your eardrum, yes. And what else? There's three. It's where you put it, you get a tube. When you get tubes, they put it right in your eardrum. What's on the other side of the eardrum? Working your way in, in the middle ear. Three bones. The three bones. Very good. Yay! I have one tube in my ear. Oh, you, you still have one tube in your ear? Yes. 
I realize that professionals and parents share the same goals for students with hearing loss. We want them to learn how to successfully problem solve their way through the challenges of school. To do this, they must have the basic knowledge and the vehicles to discuss ways to solve commonly occurring challenges in school settings. Rule the school games are such vehicles. Hearing aid, tic-tac-toe bingo, and FM, tic-tac-toe bingo, teach basic knowledge about hearing technology. While playing these games, you can also easily integrate other goals, such as articulation and language. Make, make sound louder Okay. The board game brings that vocabulary and other vocabulary, as well as challenging situations, into a game format. Helping hands teaches students about their IP accommodations. Noise reduction of the classroom. What does that mean? That means that um, I get a, um, like, on um, the tile we have tennis balls and, um, and all that stuff. Okay, you have tennis balls. What's that important? Um, so that, um... Why is it so important that it goes on an IEP? Um, because it screeches on the tile sometimes, um... In general, why is it important to reduce the noise in oh. the classroom that you're in? Um, so that it doesn't distract me and, um, I'll be able to hear the teacher better. All the games include everything needed to play and data sheets for the documentation needed for progress reports and present level of performances. Join with us in helping students with hearing loss learn to help themselves.